Hello everyone and welcome to the newest episode of Google Autofill. Yes, Google Autofill. It's a series that I've been doing for quite a while. It's been a long time since I've actually made one of these videos. But yeah, today's episode is why are Chinese? So if you didn't know, Google Autofill is this thing that happens, type in a search query into Google and it automatically completes it for you. So I've chosen to type in why are Chinese? So why are Chinese according to Google Chrome, Google search engine in uh, incognito mode. So the first one that we've got here is why are Chinese toxic? This could be any number of things, but I mean, I don't really agree with the premise to start off with. If you're in China and you're like talking with ordinary Chinese people about ordinary things, they're just like everyone else in the world. Everyone's completely fine. Maybe this is a meme of some kind. Uh, it might be referring to nationalists or like hyper-nationalists. So like everyone knows about the Wu Mao party, like the, the these hyper-nationalists, these keyboard warriors who just get online and they, they try to tear down anything remotely, possibly, maybe, tenuously connect to something against China if China had 4chan and sent its armies out to fight for China. I think that's probably what it's talking about, things like that. But yeah, let's, let's type it in. Okay, all right. Well, yeah it, seems, yeah, it seems like that is what it is. China's toxic nationalism, um, unapologetic and toxic. Yeah, okay, NBA. Yeah, there's a, <laughs> here's one that says, why are 90% of Chinese players griefers? So this is some sort of, I think this is a Minecraft, oh, it's the GTA Online. I'm not really sure what a griefer is. Let's put it up on here. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, there you go. I, I guess I was right on this one. Why are Chinese white dolphins endangered? All right, well, they're endangered due to a, a, a variety of things. Um, I assume it's probably because of pollution, um, pollution within the water and also maybe uh, overfishing. Overfishing has become a big thing, especially along, along the Yangtze River. So like the Baiji River dolphin um, is pretty much, it's extinct because of like the pollution in the water, overfishing, it disrupts the whole ecosystem and also all the shipping that goes throughout China. There's just a, an unbelievable amount of shipping and logistics that happens here. You know, it's the world's biggest population and it's the, it's the factory of the world, so to speak. And that is an unfortunate kind of consequence of it. But they are taking steps right now to, uh, to combat that. Like they've outlawed fishing on the Yangtze River. They're starting to do that. And they're going to do that for, I think, the next... A uh, year or something like that because the fishing stock in the Yangtze River is just like de It's been decimated. So they said no more fishing in anywhere along the Yangtze River. Yeah, that's that's great So they are they do know that and they're working on that But yeah, I think that's probably why the the dolphin is extinct. Why are Chinese mothers more controlling than American mothers? My child is my report card well, that's very long for one thing. My child is my report card. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> well, this is probably referring to tiger moms. I made a video about this a long time ago. There's a card that's going to pop up on the screen here uh, that you can watch. So I made a video a long time ago about competition. Competition in China is unbelievable. In schools, the competition for jobs, the competition for this and that and that. You know, you've got a billion people, 1.4 billion people, you've got all these kids, hundreds and hundreds of millions of kids who are trying to get into university or trying to get into good middle schools, good this, good that. So, as a consequence of that, there are jobs like these English training centers, there are all these like piano classes and like extra math classes and extra classes to make these kids stand out from the group. That's why Chinese parents are generally speaking more controlling because they want their child to stand out from the crowd. They want their child to do well, to get into these good schools, to get into these good programs, to have a better life. That's how it is here. It's kind of a sad thing. There is a video that I made about this quite a while ago. I'll put it up on here as on my This Is China playlist. Why are Chinese phones cheap? Ooh, this could get interesting. Chinese phones are cheap because Chinese phones are made in China. So you've got um, 
cost of labor is low, cost of parts is low, because everything is pretty cheap here. There's a guy who's named uh, Scotty who made a video a long time ago about building an iPhone in China. He built an iPhone here from scratch, and it only cost him like $139. He built a working iPhone from parts that he sourced around Shenzhen. So you've got wholesale markets uh, for parts that are made here in China. And also you could get into the whole like IP theft and uh, intellectual property and things like this. And plus like there's, there's a lot of competition, you know, there's a lot of different Chinese smartphones out. So you gotta put the price down because there's competition. So like I use a OnePlus to film on and I know OnePlus is part of Oppo. And um, something about OnePlus that makes OnePlus really cheap is that they sort of, they take features that are already accepted by the market. They don't do a lot of research and development. They just say, what do people like that's on the market right now? Well, let's just take this feature and this feature and this feature, maybe add one more feature to that. And that, as a result, keeps the cost way down. And OnePlus, it's, it's a great phone. They're very popular overseas and um, they're, they're not that popular here in China, but they're really, really good, actually. Uh, so Chinese phones, they're cheap and they're good, but maybe because of a few reasons that aren't so good. Number five, why are Chinese so good at ping pong? All right, okay, let's get into that one. <laughs> so ping pong actually created by the British, right? Created by the British, but somehow made its way over here. I don't know the whole history of ping pong. Chinese are really good at ping pong because it doesn't take a lot of space. So you need a table, a ball, and a racket. Those are all pretty cheap things. Don't need a lot of space. It seems like the perfect kind of recipe. It's sort of like asking why are Brazilians good at football? Why are Brazilians good at soccer? Because all you need is a field and a ball of some kind. One, it's everywhere. It's a part of the culture. Uh, if you go to a university, you'll see rows and rows and rows of ping pong tables. Uh, lining an entire like block and whenever something becomes ingrained that deeply into culture people are gonna you know take it up people are gonna be good at it so uh, yeah there you go why are Chinese smart <laughs> okay so we've got a positive thing for once Chinese are very very book smart I would absolutely agree with that they're very very book smart and uh, some Chinese are very very street smart but I think uh, Chinese may be considered smart for a few reasons. They're very book smart because China's education, like, I guess primary education, maybe middle school education, is actually really good. Like, in terms of putting facts into children's heads, China's very, very good at that. Like, I've seen so many textbooks over the years from my Chinese students about geography and psychology and physics and math and and history and all these things. These kids are on another level. Like if you compared an average Chinese student's textbooks to an average American kid's textbooks, these Chinese kids are learning way more facts and way more basic knowledge. Like it's not even a competition. Um, some things suffer as a result of that. You know, the, the obvious thing is like creativity, thinking of like teaching kids how to think instead of teaching kids to memorize. That's not a big thing here. So I think that that's probably, that probably contributes to that, um, as well as the competition. The kids have to do super, super well in exams. They have to you know, be very good at these things. And when, when anyone sees Chinese people abroad, like, you are seeing one of two things. You're seeing either uh, a student who is the best of the best. You're seeing a student who's the best of the best, who's gotten the highest scores, who has done the best, or you're seeing the richest of the rich. So, you know, you're seeing one of those two. And I've, I've met both types uh, over the years. Numbers, I don't remember which one we're on now. Why are Chinese dolphins pink? Why are Chinese white dolphins pink? Are they? Well, I mean, I remember seeing a photo of a pink dolphin, but are they all pink? Okay, well, let's actually search that one. One, these, these dolphins, they're actually called... Um, Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins. They can be gray, white, or pink, but it actually originates from not, not a pigment, but from blood vessels which were overdeveloped for thermoregulation. And this is unique to the population along the Chinese coast. That's interesting. Question answered. Question answered. I never actually uh, thought about that. Uh, okay, next one. Why are Chinese called onions? This Okay, um, this seems like a meme. 
This seems like a meme. Hold on. If I typed, I typed it in. It says, what's the deal with onions? Why does everyone keep calling each other onions? Apparently, this is a sort of meme. When it comes to Cantonese, there are certain words we don't have perfect translation. We decide to have fun and create our own slang, says Justin Lin. I don't know what that means. I don't know who that is. There's some sort of TV show that came out. And it said in the first episode, there are so many Chinese coming to America that they are worth the same as an onion. Oof. Okay, but we actually have a Chinese translation. Spring onion is very easy to grow, is deemed as cheap or low life. So asking what sort of spring and onion are you is actually saying, who the F do you think you are, you piece of this? Okay, all right, so apparently there, there's your answer. Next one, why are Chinese takeaways so expensive? Are they? Um, are Chinese takeaways expensive? I don't think they are. At least, I mean, I haven't been back to the U.S. for two years, so maybe I've missed something, but Chinese food isn't expensive at all where I'm from. I mean, what about you? If you get Chinese takeaway, how much does it cost? Last one. All right, why are Chinese pangolins endangered? <sighs> all right. Not really a fun one, not a fun topic, but uh, this is because basically of Chinese medicine. Chinese traditional medicine has wrecked a lot of wildlife populations. It's, it's, uh, it's an unfortunate reality. So like pangolins, they, they have these little scales on the, on the outside that are made of keratin. It's the same stuff that's in your fingernails. It's the same stuff that's in a rhino's horn, I believe, um, in various other animals. But Chinese traditional medicine seems to believe that this keratin, even though it's identical to what's in our fingernails, this keratin is it's different in the pangolin, so they have to get the scales from the pangolin, grind it up, and use it in various forms of medicine. So this is really common throughout uh, the animal kingdom. There's something within Chinese medicine that is really prized and really important. So people go out and poach these things, they go out and hunt these things, and then it devastates the wild population. Um, there is a law in China that says like, if you farm these animals, then you can use them for traditional medicine, and it's not illegal. But uh, there's so much demand that uh, it just, it's a huge ecological problem. So that's basically why pangolins are endangered. I think they're the most trafficked species in the world, if I remember that right. It's, it's really sad. Well, there you go. Man, we ended on quite a sad note, actually. Um, but there you go. This is Google Autofill. Hopefully, we'll make some more in the future. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Hit like, uh, leave a comment. What was your favorite answer? Or what are some questions you have about China? What are some things that you've seen on Google Autofill? Let me know down below. Let me know down below. And uh, yeah, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you all. Next